Hello, everybody. Let's take a look at problem 7.34 from the textbook that's also in your homework. All right, so this problem asks us to determine the equivalent impedance. So in each one of these problems, the equivalent impedance is going to be Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z5. And that's looking in to a circuit. And that circuit contains a bunch of different elements, some resistors, some capacitors, some inductors. All right, and it also says to find that equivalent impedance at a specific frequency. Now remember, right, we know from the, the phasor domain videos that we've looked at that when we convert a uh, inductor or a capacitor into the phasor domain, it has a frequency dependent relationship. All right, and so that's why it says to determine the, that equivalent impedance at a specific frequency. So let's look at part A. I will leave the rest of them to you uh, to do on your own, but part A should help guide you on how to do the rest of them because they're all quite similar to each other. So first, let's take a look at this circuit. We can see that it has a capacitor that's in parallel with a resistor and an inductor. And we know that from uh, the table or in the textbook that we can look up what the phasor domain representation of all of these circuit elements are. So based on that, we know that the capacitor is one over J omega C, the inductor is J omega L, and that the resistor has the same impedance in the phasor domain. We are given values for all of these circuit elements, and so we can calculate them. One thing that you must note here is that the frequency we were given in problem in part A is in Hertz, but the phasor domain is in radians. Now this gets a little confusing because uh, in common, uh, commonly in life, in many things in engineering, we represent the frequency in Hertz. However, when we're doing math, we must remember that it's in radians. So this is something that electrical engineers and anyone who works with electronics must be very careful to know is whether the frequency is in radians or in Hertz. So take a look and we, we have this omega C, so we know that it was in radian. So don't forget to add the two pi when you're doing this. So we get this final result for uh, the impedance of each of the components of our circuit. Now that we know the impedance of each one of these, let's take a look at this. And we can see, OK, well, the um, capacitor is going to be in parallel with the resistor and the inductor when we analyze this to find the equivalent impedance Z1. We can write this as the capacitor is in parallel with the impedance of the resistor plus the impedance of the inductor quantity. And if you do the math, this is going to look like this in rectangular. And again, this is going to be somewhat difficult, right, to do all of this math in rectangular coordinates. But your calculator can convert this for you. So you should be able to type this in in rectangular and receive the result in polar or vice versa. So make sure you know how to have your calculator do this for you. This is going to make your life much easier. So we get a rectangular result for the impedance as this. And that is the final answer for the equivalent impedance of this circuit at 1000 hertz. So the equivalent impedance is often given in rectangular form. So it's it, if you are looking at equivalent impedances, you will typically see these in the uh, circuit diagrams. Or maybe if you uh, look up the part and look at the data sheet, you will see impedance is typically given in rectangular. And so this is the result of the impedance at that frequency. The rest of the uh, problems in this, the rest of the parts of this problem are all quite similar, but I hope this one gives you a good head start for understanding how to do them. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.